Hi everyone, I'm here with a quick review um, of our first lesson uh, for first year string players. This video is for violin and viola players. There will be a separate video for, for cellists, so if you play the cello, um, it probably is right after this video. Go, in, go and look for that one. Um, I hope this will be a good tool for students to review some of the things we did in our lesson and also to give parents a little um, preview of what your child has learned so that you can help them throughout the week um, as they are practicing. So first, just a couple of pieces of instrument care that we, we went over this week. The first thing is that it's very important to keep your instrument at room temperature as much as possible. Since the instrument is made out of wood, drastic temperature changes can be very dangerous for it and it can actually cause um, the instrument to crack and there's all sorts of um, damage that could occur from that. So I always just ask students and families to be careful about where they are storing their instrument. Generally like a bedroom is a really good place because if if you're cold in that in that room, it probably means that the instrument is too cold as well. So like a basement or a porch might not be the best um, spot to store an instrument. Um, also somewhere that's really hot, like next to the a furnace or the fireplace. Um, and if you have any questions, you can feel free to email me and we can talk about that. But generally just in a, in a nice room temperature place is good for storing your instrument. Um, the next important piece of information is about these pegs. This is one way that we tune the instrument and occasionally um, a student might open their case and find that some of the strings are a little bit loose, which means that the peg probably slipped and the instrument needs to be tuned. That's something that I can do very quickly and fix for them and it's not a big deal at all. It probably wasn't even a result of anything they did. It just happens sometimes. Um, but often students will try to fix it themselves and if these pegs are turned too much, the string will actually snap and then we have to pay for a new string to replace it. So I just always ask that if you open up your case and the instrument looks like that, um, just pack it back up and bring it into me. Even if it's not your lesson day, I'm happy to take care of it um, and then we can go back to playing. But it will just save us the cost of having to, re to replace the string. So let's get into some, some uh, of the playing that we worked on this week. First we worked on um, holding the instrument and students practiced something called the Statue of Liberty. We were standing up for this and we practiced holding our instrument in our left hand up like the Statue of Liberty holds their torch. The next thing that we're going to do is flip the instrument over and place it on our shoulder so it should be right on your shoulder like this. And then the part of your face that's going to contact the instrument is the side right here, your jaw. We're not going to put our chin, this is called the chin rest, but your chin does not go on it. We're looking to have our jaw go on, on that chin rest. So you might need to give your head a tiny tilt to the left and then just set it right down on the chin rest like this. So we're looking for an instrument that is parallel to the floor. It shouldn't be up like this. That's very uncomfortable to hold it like this. It also should not be pointed at the ground. So we're looking for parallel to the floor. Um, another thing is in terms of the angle, you don't want it all the way out pointing to the left and you also don't want it all the way in the front. If you feel like the instrument is kind of choking you, that means it's probably too close um, you're probably having it come out of the front of you too much. Um, you're looking for some an angle in between there. So mine, mine just kind of comes out like this, and, and um, this is what's comfortable for me. It might be different for you. It depends on, it just, everyone's a little bit different. I will recommend um, most people who rented their instrument did um, purchase the shoulder rest as part of the their rental package. If you're borrowing an instrument from the school, we unfortunately do not have um, enough sh shoulder rests to give to all students, but this is a, a relatively cheap um, thing that you can purchase to go with the violin. Normally they're uh, between 10 and $20. Um, and I'll send out a link to that. It's not required, but it is one thing that will, will help your child, um, most people find it helpful. And if you would like to try, have them try one out before ordering, I'm happy to, to bring one in for them to try. Just to show without the shoulder rest, so I've taken mine off, you're gonna do the Statue of Liberty, flip it over, place it on your shoulder, give your head a little turn, and then there's a little bit, you have to bring your head down a little bit more without that shoulder rest. So you definitely can hold it without it, it's just uh, a little bit more work. Ultimately what we're looking for is that it's the you're holding the instrument up here. Your left hand shouldn't be holding the instrument up because eventually we'll be using that hand um, to do our to uh, 
create notes. So the idea is that you should be able to hold the instrument like this. And we'll keep working on this in lessons. Um, if you're following along to practice right now, I would pause the video and just practice doing that Statue of Liberty a few times, making sure that you're feeling really comfortable, that you're looking sort of like I am right now, um, that you're not doing anything that hurts, that everything is just relaxed and comfortable when you're doing this. Um, moving on, um, you may notice that we're not using our bow this week um, when we're playing, and that is intentional. There are a lot of extra technique things that go along with using the bow, and that's something that we normally tackle about four or five lessons in. So we spend the first four weeks working on left hand stuff, and then after, then we'll start doing um, things with our right hand. I ask that you not take the bow out at home um, because I don't like when students just play around with it and form bad, bad habits, it makes it a lot harder to learn the correct way um, once we do that in lessons. So I appreciate everyone's um, cooperation in that. But we can play using um, pizzicato or plucking, and that's what we learned in our lesson. So um, when you do pizzicato, you take your right hand and make an L. Your thumb is going to go against this black piece called the fingerboard, and you're just going to anchor it right there. Let me get a little bit closer so you can see. Uh, it's not really on the point, it's just like this. It's really important that your thumb stays here. Students sometimes try to pluck without it, and it makes it very difficult. Um, so in, the first thing is to make sure you anchor that thumb. Then your index finger is what's going to be doing the plucking. Now I'm, I'm playing on a violin right now, but even if you're on a viola, just go through and pluck all four strings like this. The nice thing is that it's very difficult to break a string while plucking, so don't feel worried about plucking too hard. I'm going to do it a little bit harder now so you can hear. We want a nice full sound like that. Now if you're a violin, the string names are E, A, D, and G. That's going from high to low, E, A, D, and G. If you're playing a viola, your strings are A, D, G, and C. So viola is A, D, G, and C. That would be a really important thing to memorize, to work on this week. So if you're practicing along with me, pause the video right now and go through those strings um, until you feel like you have those memorized so that you can say them backwards and forwards. Um, Moving on, we're looking at our homework for this week, which is page four in the lesson book. If you do not have a lesson book yet, um, I provided students with photocopies of this. And our homework was number one through four on that, um, on, on page four. So I'm looking at number one right now, the D and A march. And I'd ask that everyone, if you're, if you're practicing right now, if you're following along, Take a look at number one and point at your first note on that page. That first note is called D. And that's the same D as your open D string. So if you're a violinist, D is this string right here. You have your lowest string G, and then right next to it is D. If you play the viola, D is going to be the second highest string, so it would be the second one in. Um, it, that's why it's so important that you remember those string names so that you can just find it like that and know which string is the D string. Even though they're in different positions, by the way, they sound the same. So when I play it on the violin, it will sound the same way that it should sound on a viola. So if we're going through number one, we see that we have four Ds, and that's our open D string. And after we play those four Ds, there's a new note, and it looks a little bit higher on the staff. That note is called A, and A is the string directly to the right of your D string. So then we play four A's. So what we did in our lesson is we went through number one, D and A march, and we read the note names in rhythm. You'll also see that there's something called a rest, which is a musical pause. So right now, um, I'm going to read through number one, and if you're practicing with me, you can actually read through it with me right now. So here I go. D, 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 A, 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 D, D, A, A, D, 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 rest. A, 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 D, 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 A, 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 D, 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 rest. So now we're going to combine everything that we've worked on in this lesson. We're going to have the violin with our Statue of Liberty. Make sure you're holding it um, in a nice, comfortable way. 
we're going to get our pizzicato ready, anchor that left thumb on the fingerboard, and put your um, index finger on the D string, and we're going to go through and play number one, the D and A march. Now I'm going to say the string names while I'm playing just to help you, but don't feel like you have to do that. It's a lot harder to talk and play. So you just focus on playing. I'll say the strings to help us um, stay together. So here I go. D, 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 A, 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 D, D, A, A, D, 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 rest. A, 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 D, 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 A, 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 D, 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 rest. So that was number one. Your job for this week is to go through numbers one through four and feel like you're really solid on those, like you can get all the way through those. Everybody filled out a practice log this week which listed the homework and we're going to fill one of those out each week. If you bring that practice log back to me at your next lesson and you have filled in four days of practice, um, you'll earn a sticker, and we use those stickers for all sorts of cool things um, for the rest of the year. So it's, I, I like to see at least four days of practice in between each lesson. Practice sessions are normally between 15 and 20 minutes, but this week we went kind of light on the homework, so I would say it would probably be about 10 minutes of practice. Um, so that's my update for lesson one. I hope you found this helpful, and I'll be back next week with an update on lesson two.